Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening and laughing pleasure with Chuckles with a carload and music by Matty Malnick. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, where... Wait a minute. Where have you been all afternoon, Lou? Well, I just got a report on a new picture, Africa Screams. You know, Abbott, when we were making it, it said if, uh, if, if it didn't make $2 million, I'd be a used car dealer. Well, how was the picture doing? Right now, you can call me Honest John Costello. <laughs> how, can you have, how can you expect people to have faith in you, Lou? Look, look at the way you're dressed, Lou. What's the matter? Well, why don't you buy clothes like me? Uh, did you see that new uh, camel's hair coat I just got? Are you kidding? That's not camel's hair. Whatever happened to your little cocker spaniel dog? I... I uh, ask you, what happened to your little cocker spaniel? Hello. Are you insinuating that my coat is made out of dog's hair? All I know is, brother, that every time you stroke the lapels on the coat, the back end of the coat wags at you. <laughs> Why does he take up a hobby of some kind, Lou? Well, my Uncle Mike has a hobby. He builds, he builds boats and bottles. Does he build many boats? Well, he empties a lot of bottles. <laughs> Hey, Abbott, who was that good-looking girl you were talking to in the hall? What a figure. What a pair of legs. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, now, wait a minute. How could you see her legs? She had a, lo- a long dress. All you saw was her ankles. So what? If the house is like the patio, I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> that's oh, what I thought. See, I was mad at it. Folks, you're in for some real laughs with our zany stars tonight. But before they continue, listen to this. I'll tell you what I want. Right. Ha- ha- have there been any phone calls for me? Nope. Any ber- pretty girls call me? Nope. Any ugly girls call me? Nope. Abbott? Yes? What are you doing tonight? I... <laughs> There's Ladies. no phone calls for you. But I've got a postcard here. Who is it from? The YWCA. Here, read it. How do you like that? They turned down my application again. <laughs> Girls, girls, girls. All you do is, is, is going around kissing girls. Kissing girls. Kissing girls will be the death of you. Just so they keep puckering up, I'll die happy. I... <laughs> what happened to that little blonde singer you were going to give the job on this show? Well, I, I don't think we can use a rabbit. She's too dumb. She don't know the first thing about music. She don't? She's so dumb, she thinks that Stokowski is an orchestra leader. That... <laughs> Costello, Stokowski is an orchestra leader. Well, every once in a while, she can make a lucky guess. I... Well, he's a dumb. You're nothing but a moronic, ignorant, imbecilic nincompoop. Tell me, how do you manage to become so stupid? Well, it's hard to explain without sounding conceited. I... 
Why don't you cut out all this nonsense, Costello? Get yourself a job and, and try to make some money. I don't have to worry about money. When my new invention comes out, I'll have millions. You've got a new invention? Yes, it's a suntan oil for chickens. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What good is suntan oil for a chicken? It's for people that like dark meat. I... <laughs> Costello, you're hopeless. No girl with any intelligence to have anything to do with you. Is that so? That's so. I don't know about that. There's plenty of talk spreading around Hollywood that Rita Hayworth is crazy about me. Who's spreading it? I am. I... <laughs> Rita, Rita Hayworth. She wouldn't have anything to do with you. You don't even, you don't even know how to treat a girl. You've got to be rough with girls, You do. It? If you know so much about women, how come you're not still going with that little red-headed uh, bubble dancer? Oh, well, that's a sad case, Adam. It is? She died of a broken heart. She did? One night, she was out there doing her bubble dance, and the bubble developed a slow leak. She thought the audience was hissing her. <laughs> Whatever happened to that little Mary Bozzo you used to go with in Patterson? Oh, she's in business now. She raises hunting dogs. Here's a picture she sent me of her and one of her dogs. Mm-hmm. Uh, which one is Mary? She's the one on the left with the bird in her mouth. I... By the way, who's that silly, silly looking girl I saw you with last night? Abbott, that's my new girl. She's plenty smart. She's the best clothes sprinkler at the Los Angeles laundry. What makes what makes her the best clothes sprinkler? Two of her front teeth are missing. Two. <laughs> you sure get yourself some swell girl. That one you introduced to me last week. Yeah. As, as a society girl. She's no society girl, Lou. She's not? No. She works on the wash rack at the auto laundry. I wonder why she always wears those boots and those long rubber gloves with that evening gown. <laughs> I'm going to quit going with her, Abbott. I don't think her father likes me. Uh, what makes you say that? Well, last night we sat in the parlor until half past twelve, and her father came in and said, Young man, do you think you can stay here all night? What do you say? I'll have to go home first. <laughs> what do you have to go home first? For? I didn't bring my pajamas. Oh. <laughs> And then he really made me mad. He told his daughter I was an idiot. That made you mad? Yes, I wanted to be the first to tell her. <laughs> how, how did you ever get into show business anyway? How did I ever get yeah. into show business? A long story, Abbott. Now, I when don't I, want to hear it. You're going to get it. All right. When I first came out here to Hollywood, nobody noticed me. Then one day I went into a drugstore to get a soda, and there I was discovered. Who discovered you? The manager. I was trying to sneak out without paying him a check. <laughs> Well, you know, it isn't, it isn't bad enough that you come out here. You had to bring your whole family out here. They're a disgrace to the community. I saw your brother Pat and your Uncle Mike walking down Vine Street yesterday. I'll bet they were coming out of a saloon. Oh, they were not. That's um, good. In all fairness to them, I'll say they were not coming out of a saloon. That's good. They were going in. <laughs> My name is Lou Costello. I'm an actor by profession. My address is 6363 Sunset Boulevard. Uh, wait a minute. What are you doing? I haven't had a joke so long, I thought I'd apply for my unemployment insurance. <laughs> ah, Monsieur Costello, I am so happy to see you. Yeah, I'm so just happy a, to see just you a too. minute, mister. I am so happy to see anybody tonight on the show. Just a minute. We're doing a radio show. What's the idea of raking here like this? I am here to see Monsieur Costello. Uh, I am so happy to see you, monsieur. Yeah. The people of France have sent me to see you. Yeah. You have brought so much joy to the radio listeners of oh, my that's country. Good, that's good. That's the people of France have sent me to present you with the medal of France. Wait a minute. The people of France. He is presenting you with a medal from the government of France. From France, the radio France, listeners. France. France. Ignorant, France. You heard France. the man. France. Hey, monsieur, the people of France. The people of France. France. The people of France presenting me a medal? Certainly. We, oui, monsieur, the people of France. Just a minute. Just a minute. This show don't go overseas. The people of France can't hear me on the radio. Why do you think we are giving you the medal? I... <laughs> Well, Costello, that shows you what your fans think of you. With me, it's different. I've got, I've got a Bud Abbott fan club. Crowds wait outside to get my autograph. That shows how popular I am. Ah, uh, but do you think it's worth it, dressing up every Thursday like Joe Stafford and passing out samples of Chesterfield cigarettes? I... <laughs> you think it's worth it? Oh, how do you do, Mr. Costello? I'm selling a new type vacuum cleaner for cleaning dining room tables. This vacuum cleaner is guaranteed to pick up crumbs. A vacuum cleaner that picks up crumbs? Yes, sir. It's made to pick up nothing but crumbs. Here, I'll give you a demonstration. Costello! Costello! 
Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Hey, how do you like that? Abbott's inside the vacuum cleaner. Listen, mister, I thought you said this vacuum cleaner only picked up crumbs. How did Abbott get in the bag? You can't fool this vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Abbott, why does everybody try to steal me stuff? Last week, a guy tried to sell me a, a pair of suspenders two inches long. A pair of suspenders? Everybody's two... trying to sell me stuff. A pair of suspenders two yeah. inches long? Yeah. What are they for? Lamb chops that keep losing their panties. <laughs> Well, Costello, all inventions are a little eccentric. Yeah, you're telling me my cousin Vincent invented a clock that's got a little bird in it. Cuckoo. Well, yeah, he's nuttier than a fruitcake. <laughs> he also made a shirt out of onion skins. But he's afraid to wear it. A shirt made out of onion skins. Yeah. And he's afraid to wear it? Why? Every time he passes a hot dog stand, a tail jumps up and waves out to the hamburgers. <laughs> Boys. Well, look, Costello, it's our lovely secretary, Viola Vaughn. You look awfully nervous tonight, uh, Viola. Is there anything wrong? Well, there's sure. something peculiar going on in this show. What is it? Well, that, that band leader of yours, Maddie Malik, has been following me home every night for the past week. After I go in the house, he peeks in the windows and hangs outside my door until all hours of the morning. What do you suppose he wants? I don't know. Can you fix violins? <laughs> I forget about Maddie Max, Malik, Viola, 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 Viola. Let you and I go horseback riding together tomorrow morning. Costello, can you ride a horse? Certainly, I ride. I ride better than Roy Rogers, Gene Autry put together. That's what you look like too. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't have to take that kind of guff from you, Viola. Women are crazy about me. What kind of women? Crazy women. <laughs> Last night, I could have had a date with a beautiful blonde, but I preferred to stay home with my dog. You had a chance to go out with a beautiful blonde, and you stayed home with your dog? Yeah. Oh, Costello, I've got to have a talk with you. Then after it gets dark, I went hunting in Griffith Park. Well, what can you hunt at night in Griffith Park? <laughs> and she's going to have a talk with me. <laughs> No, 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 no. Costello, why do you always argue with Viola? Why don't you two try to be friends? I'm willing. Come close to me, Viola. Put your arms around me and hold me. All right. Oh, there. How long do I have to hold you? If nobody calls for me in 30 days, I'm yours. <laughs> no, that's no way to talk to Viola. Watch me. Handling women is second nature with me. Women with me is just a habit, like, uh, cigarettes. Yes, it takes a whole pack of them to make you spend 15 cents. I... <laughs> Viola, how would you and Casella like to come over to my house next Tuesday? I'm having a Washington's birthday party. Oh, it's my line, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Can I bring my Uncle Mike? He's very interested in George Washington. He collects a lot of his stuff, you know. He's got the bed that George Washington... Shivered in. You mean the bed that George Washington slept in? Hey, you don't know the uh, cold facts of history, Lou. You don't know the cold feet of Martha. <laughs> oh, Costello, George Washington was a great man. Why, why, he once threw a dollar across the Potomac River, and all the people cheered. That's where all the people made a mistake. They should have never encouraged him. What do you mean? Now Washington has thrown millions of dollars across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> Viola, if you and Costello come to the party, you could tell Costello's fortune for him. Oh, I'd be glad to tell Costello's fortune. How do you do it, Viola? By reading tea leaves? No, I do it the hard way, by reading coffee beans. <laughs> what could you tell about me by reading coffee beans? Well, whether you're percolator, silex, or just plain drip. <laughs> oh, that's all. And there's a lot more mad stuff still to come. But right now, a change of pace to let you hear this.
the singing star of the Abbott and Costello show, Hal Winters with Matty Malnick and his orchestra. It's a big, wide, wonderful world you live in. When you're in love, you're a master of all you survey. You're a gay Santa Claus. There's a brave new star-spangled sky above you. When you're in love, you're a hero, a Nero Apollo, the Wizard of Oz. You've a kingdom, power and glory, the old, old, oldest of stories is new, true. You've built your room in just one day. Life is mystic, a midsummer's night you live in. A Turkish delight, you're in heaven. It's swell when you're really in love. Kingdom, power and glory, the old, old, oldest of stories is new, true. You've built your room in just one day. Life is mystic, a midsummer's night you live in. A Turkish delight, you're in heaven. It's swell when you're really in love. It's swell when you're really in love. Right. I just saw a house I like, and I think I'll, 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 think I'll take the money. I made a Sam Shovely detective and buy it. Where's the house? Way up in the Hollywood Hills. It has a very unusual view. What a view. You can see the city. Well, what's so unusual about that? From any house in the Hollywood Hills, you can see the city. Kansas City? I... <laughs> Costello, since you've been playing the part of Sam Shovel, you're, you're getting dumber than ever. Oh, no, I ain't. Oh, well, yes, you are. Before I played Sam Shovel, people used to look at me and say, there goes Costello, that dumb radio actor. Now things are different. Yes? yes. What do they say when they uh, see you now? There goes Costello, that dumb radio actor who plays Sam Shovel. <laughs> However, my fan mail is still pouring in. Listen to this. I got a wonderful letter tonight. What does it say? Dear Lou Costello, I've just got to tell you how much I enjoy your Sam Shovel detective stories. When you come on Thursday nights, I never miss you. I won't leave the house on Thursday nights for anybody. My wife says I'm just an old stick in the mud. I'm coming to the studio tonight. Mr. Costello, is someone here to see you? Send the man in. It's no man, just an old stick covered with mud. <laughs> oh, never mind him, Costello. Let's get on with the show. Uh, what is your Sam Shovel story for the night? Well, it's one of my most mysterious cases, Abbott. I call it the case of the Shakespearean actor who robbed the perfume factory and stole an unlabeled bottle of perfume or... Taboo or not taboo? <laughs> that is the question. Don't you have a more interesting case, Costello? I'll let you know as soon as I get on the next page. <laughs> well, I could do another. I call this one the case of the panhandler who pawned his false teeth, or beggars can't be chewers. <laughs> The makers of that famous mouthwash, Gargadrule, present your favorite mystery program, Sam Shovel, Private Detective. But first, a word about our product, Gargadrule. Gargadrule is the only mouthwash that comes in three delicious flavors. Benzene, formaldehyde, and flip. <laughs> Attention all midgets. Why, be quarter safe. Use Gargadrule and be half safe. And now to the further adventures of Sam Shovel, private detective. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. 
Sam Shovel, private detective. I'm sitting here in my little office working on a case of Gertie the shoplifter. The biggest woman crook in the world. Anywhere Gertie were, weighs 300 pounds. <laughs> so did that sentence. She can steal a pair of gloves just by putting her hand over them. She stole a pair of shoes just by putting her foot over them. Yesterday, she stole a sofa just by putting a blanket over it. <laughs> Gertie's husband was a thief, too. His name was Paul. Now I get it. He stole nothing but hats. He was known as public enemy number six and seven eights. <laughs> well, it's time I had lunch, but I'm not going to Joe's cafeteria. What a joint. They got a big sign that says, watch your hat and coat. Yesterday, while I was watching that sign, somebody stole my pants. <laughs> I wish my secretary was here. What a secretary. Last week, I told her to take a letter. She took one, and she hasn't been back since. <laughs> On my desk, I noticed a picture of my barber. He's doing 20 years in Sing Sing. They gave him a job as executioner, running the electric chair. But the warden had to fire him. He couldn't forget he was a barber and put up a sign in the prison. Three chairs, no waiting. <laughs> it's nearly time for my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, to show up. What a smart cop. Abbott thinks on his feet. He has to. That's where his brains are. Lieutenant Abbott is quite a sport. Every week he goes to the racetrack and drops a bundle. Every single week he goes to the racetrack and drops a bundle. He has to. His wife does the jockey's laundry. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott knows how to handle women. His wife used to be a backseat driver before he married her. But now she's tongue-tied. Every time Abbott takes her out in the car, he ties her tongue to the ashtray. You should see Abbott's wife. She has a weather-beaten face. You can't tell whether it was beaten or she was born that way. <laughs> I was due for one. But I must admit, she has her good points. She has a nice chin as chins run. She has nice lips as lips run. And she has a nice nose also. <laughs> what a wife. What a wife. The day they were married, she drove Lieutenant Abbott to drink. That was 15 years ago, and he liked the idea so much now that he drives over himself. Hello, Sam Shovel. Hello, Lieutenant Abbott. Sam, I understand. I understand you, you bought a new police dog. I did, but I had to get rid of him. He was a German police dog who was a Doberman pincher. Uh, how could a police dog be a Doberman pincher? Every time he saw a Doberman, he wanted a pincher. <laughs> Talk sense, Sam. I understand you're working on a murder. Yes, and I think I got the solution. This guy was shot from behind, and he's got a bullet hole in the front of his head. Wait a minute. He was shot from behind? How... Uh, how could the bullet hole be in the front of his head? Easy. When he heard the shot, he turned around. Uh... <laughs> Sam, how would you like to help me on the case of the racetrack? There are crooks at the racetrack. Sure. Why, just this morning, we arrested a crooked horse. What makes you so sure the horse was crooked? Shh. We caught him doping a jockey. <laughs> I'd like to catch the guy that's doping this script. <laughs> Never mind that. If you want to catch some real crooks, why don't you arrest that jockey that rode four horses yesterday? You idiot. Lots of jockeys ride four horses. In the same race? I... <laughs> Sam, I can see that you know nothing about racetracks. Is that so? I owned a horse last year who could burn up the track. Was he that fast? No, but he loved to play with matches, so he set <laughs> fire to the stables. <laughs> If you won't help me, I'm going down to that racetrack and capture that mob of crooks single-handed. So, you blabbermouth fat foot, you're going to turn me in, huh? Who are you? I'm Ringer McGee. I'm head of the racetrack mob. There's a mob right here. These are me boys. Say hello to the cops, boys. Hey, Mike. Hello. You, Jack. Hello. And you, Freddy. How do you do? Why did you shoot Freddy? I can't stand people that talk too much. Now, uh, if you're going to cop, he's going to play ball with me. I got a horse going tomorrow, and he can't lose. Look, here's his pitcher. Hey, this horse looks too old to run. What makes you think he's uh, so old, Sam? Well, he's the first horse I ever saw that was wearing high-button horseshoes. 
Never mind that. What do you think of Ringer's proposition? Well, I never had any luck betting on horses. Monday I bet on a horse and he lost by a nose. Tuesday I bet on a horse and he lost by a nose. Wednesday I bet on a horse and he ran backwards. Did he lose? Yes, but not by a nose. <laughs> Listen, coppers. I'm warning you lay off, see? You see the scar on me right fist? That's from a cop who tried to pin a rap on me. You see the scar on me left fist? That's from another cop. He tried to pin a rap on me. Yeah, see the scar on my hip? What's, What's that from? That's where my mother tried to pin a diaper on me. <laughs> oh, a wise guy, eh? Sam Shovel, I got a good mind to mop up this office with you. Watch yourself, Ringer. The last guy that said it to me spent a whole week in the hospital. He did. Yes, he came to visit me once a day. <laughs> Ringer, Ringer, your bluff won't work. You're under arrest. Put the handcuffs on him, Sam. Oh. Oh. Well, Ringer, you ain't so tough now, are you? Please, Mr. Shovel, please don't send me to jail. I don't mind so much for myself, but think of me beautiful wife. <laughs> me wife, she'll be all alone. Look, here's her picture. Say, she's beautiful. She's only 19. Please don't send me to jail. Think of my wife. Mm -hmm. She's got lovely blonde hair and she's got skin just like satin. Please, please don't send me to jail. Think of my wife. Lieutenant Abbott takes this man to jail. But Sam, Sam, please, think of my wife. Please, think of my wife. I am, I am. Get him out of here. Lock him up. <laughs> Take him away. Throw a blanket over him. The boys will be back to the curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. Costello, we've got about two minutes left before we go off the air. Right. Now, wish you do something for me, Abbott. Anything at all, Lou. Well, uh, do you know a slow boat to China? Sure. Do you want me to, uh, s to sing it? No, I want you to take it. Th <laughs> <laughs> well, you should be ashamed of yourself. Instead of selling me, you should use this time to tell the folks who helps us with this show. Put the show on, you know, Lou. Folks are like... Our writing staff is headed by Eddie Foreman with Paul Conlon, Pat Costello... Martin uh, Ragaway and uh, Len Stern. And we must not forget at any cost, our producer, producer, Charles Vander. Charles Vander, you're right. And we'll be back with you again Thursday night. Next Thursday night. Good, Good night, night, folks. folks. Good night to everybody in Patterson. Good night, Mom. Good night, dear. Good night, everybody. Listen each Thursday night at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station. <laughs>